All right, welcome everybody to Enhancing the Accountant Bookkeeper Connection series. I do not have my slides today because I am at a conference in St. Louis, Missouri, and you have to be somewhere in a few minutes. So we've got, Kim is going to be co-hosting with Jonathan today. So thank you so much, Kim. And quick introduction is, you know, Jonathan and myself have been working together many, many, many years. We have mutual clients. He's my accountant as well. And what really drew me to Jonathan was that he really truly as much as I do believes in collaboration working together um, he has helped us with many processes internally and to make us better bookkeepers and, and so any other accountants out there if you're watching this that we do have mutual clients with you got Jonathan to thank for the quality of the work if it's good if it's bad then no then don't thank him for that that's on us <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I am going to pass this over now to Jonathan. This is interactive, so feel free as you're comfortable to take yourself, um, unmute yourself. If you're in the waiting room, just, you know, raise your hand or stick into the chat. Um, Kim will try to keep an eye and let you in, but sometimes when we're trying to, you know, be present, we can maybe miss it. So just go ahead and, and stick a little note up there. And um, that's great. So Jonathan, take it away. And I look forward to watching the recording and catching up with everybody afterwards and all these new ideas and everything that we've uh, that we found here, so. Thanks, Tanya. Um, I stayed in the room, Tanya. I'm sure I was in that room at one point, so. St. Louis, I don't know, were you? Courtyard Marriott, St. Louis, so. As long as, you weren't, as long as you weren't in here at the same time as me, I think, I think, you know, our spouses will be fine. Anyway, you're so safe. You're safe. I'll have to cut that out of the recording anyway. <laughs> okay. I am off. Thank you so much. Um, Kim, thank you, Jonathan, as always. And we will see you all very soon, hopefully. Oh, thanks, Tanya. Thanks. And bye. Thanks for everybody for coming on as pan who's come on as panelists. I really appreciate that. Uh, so just a quick, who am I? I'm the founder of Cat Eye Accounting Solutions. I, I've done a lot of work with Intuit. Uh, I've won some awards, we're elite pro advisors, QBO Advanced Certified, and made the top 100 list again this year. So I'm very proud of that. Uh, and we do work with a lot of cloud bookkeeping firms. Uh, and we like working with technology uh, firms as well. And uh, yeah, that's a little bit about me. I'm going to get right into it. So summer break who's looking forward to summer who's looking forward to saturday after that june 30th deadline is done i'll tell you yeah i, I see karen i see lynn i see kim i see carol yes i couldn't agree more so let, let's start the interacting does anybody have anything special planned for this summer business personal whatever yeah come on unmute yourself carol oh there oh. you are oh um, so this summer in August, I'm going to um, just south of Edmonton to Roslyn, my girlfriend and her friend host a big band party. And every year it's been a one day thing. Um, last year it was sort of a one long day. This year they've made it two full days and a half day Sunday morning breakfast. So um it's going to be tons of bands from that come up from Mexico where she has uh, hosted their bands in a bar that she owned but recently sold. So they all come up and it's going to be epic. I can't wait. I'm looking forward to the uh, this one time at band camp stories. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm driving there with my friend Phil, so there might be <laughs> some oh, okay. breakdown stories. Who knows? <laughs> oh, let's hope not the stuck in traffic stories like Tanya was telling before everybody came on. Does um, anybody else have anything else coming up? I know Kim is uh, diving in the chat and not really a surprise there, but much nicer diving in the summer in, uh, in Canada. That's for sure. That's for sure. Anybody else have any plans they want to share about? Lynn? We're going to try and get back up into the Okanagan a couple more times this year if the fire season uh, holds off. <laughs> yeah. It's always it's always an iffy thing out here, you know, and the fire start and the smoke because the smoke goes everywhere. Yeah. The yeah. Where we are right now, um, normally I can see the other side of the lake. I can see the islands clearly, and I can't see the other side of the lake right now yeah. for the smoke. It's yeah, it's really bad that, here uh, today. Yeah, yeah, it's it's hard, you know. But um, we have really good friends with 
up there and we just love to spend time with them. So that's awesome. That's my happy place. That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm going to be frank. I, I would very much like to explore the Okanagan Valley quite a bit. Um, I have a cousin who has a, uh, like he lives on that big lake there between Kamloops and Kelowna, I think it is. Okay. Am I thinking of the right spot? Yeah. Like there's yeah. a great big lake. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I've, I've heard so many great things about it. Yeah, How about Jeremy, everybody? Sorry, go on. Jeremy is the south of uh, Kelowna, but yeah, it's okay. pretty down there. Really pretty. Yeah. yeah. Anybody else want to share any excitement? You have to let me know when you're coming this way. I will. I will. We actually, uh, we were hoping to go to the East Coast, but we ended up canceling that trip. Mm -hmm. um, just we didn't book stuff in time and, and whatnot. And we wanted to make good use of our summer. So we're tackling some DIY things instead. But that's just, you know, make your, your house a home kind of mm -hmm. idea. Right. Anybody else want to share any plans? That make your house a home part is good for mental health too. A lot of people Amen. find it therapeutic to do things while you're doing them and then just absorbing the results after you're done too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want the results. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so far uh, we have, um, we live in an older, older place. The top floor was built in 1946. This floor that I'm on right now, the first floor was built underneath it in 1997 and we had to do a bunch of repairs and repaint it around the outside and living in the country we have septic stuff we have to do relay a patio those kind of things but that's really going to make our space nicer and make it more like a home so we're really looking forward to that does anybody else have any anything they want to share and if not that's okay we can move on gardening gardening yes yeah. Making my secondary plans with Kathy too. <laughs> yeah. I I um I design gardens for fun. So oh good. I got a few you. of them on my plate this year. We have a, a couple of clients who who do that. One is very well renowned. We paid him to do a walkabout on our property. Ooh. And he gave us all these ideas. And we have shored up the shoreline. So it used to be like when you're in the lake, you'd look at the shore and you'd see the grass and then you'd see rocks for about four feet. Yeah. And now the green is almost down to the water line after about two years of doing the stuff he suggested. So having that good advice so in that realm is amazing. And of course, identifying the invasive species, getting rid of them, using the stuff we have available to beautify the property. So we have tiger lilies that we've got everywhere now and things like that. So, Everything yeah. grows in Ontario and BC. Here in Calgary, not so much. Yeah, I've heard it's a little dry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll keep going on the on our our webinar today. So it's summer break with a question mark, because there there does tend to be this this misconception that if you work in our realm, oh, you 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 only work for a few months of the year. We all know that's not true. We all know that, you know. As, as bookkeepers, your your month to month is pretty much the same with increased periods of intensity when you're doing your ends. As an accounting firm, we have that, and then we have the increased intensity during tax season when we have to fit uh, all those tax returns into just a few short months. So I know none of us are taking the whole summer off, or at least I doubt any of us are taking the whole summer off, but that's why I said summer break with a question mark, right? Are we actually taking some breaks? So, oh, I went too fast. Um, let me just go back one. So just to go over the agenda real quick, I am going to be talking about this more in a business focus, but it is important to take breaks. And, and it was good to talk about that a little bit at the beginning. And we'll talk about that more, I'm sure. So the agenda, first of all, take a break. Know your priorities. Work on your business. Don't work in the business, work on the business. Now, when there's not as many year ends, I know there's the day to day, but these are the times you can do things like revisit your business plan, your SWAT, figure out what your priorities are and schedule them and get them done. And uh, every year, uh, starting July 1st, we go through our, our processes and we start cleaning stuff up. And one of my big focuses this coming year is going to be team training. Finally, uh, just a recommendation to do something different and broaden your horizons a bit. 
So Carol, you had your hand up. What's up? What is SWAT? Uh, we will get to that. Oh, okay. It is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and mm -hmm. threats. Ooh. In a matrix. Yeah, so, is much yes. Better. I have a little like graphic on that slide. We'll get to it. Um, nice, Kathy, <laughs> spending time at your summer place. That's awesome. Uh, I'm kind of curious where your summer place is. Um, and speaking of our, our place, uh, last year we did uh, extend an invite to some accounting professionals I admire to do a barbecue. We're going to try and do it again, but we'll kind of have to see where our renos are at. Uh, it would be the weekend after Labor Day weekend if we're going to do it. Okay. So poll number one, what are you doing this summer? I kind of was joking around. This is completely subjective in answers, but uh, <laughs> I'm just curious about some of these subjective answers. Kim's going to put the poll up. Reminder, you have to answer both poll questions to get your uh, CPD credits from CPB Canada. Um, yeah. Jonathan, you don't have sleep on there. Where is sleep? <laughs> yeah, really, eh? <laughs> The first year after tax time, I tell you, I was just out for a week afterwards. It was just, it was, I don't know, this year just seemed to be um, exceptionally I find that way. I'm fine I'm that way after April's deadline, but after June's deadline, I'm in summer mode. Like the thing I can't wait to do is get out in the boat. So um, everybody answer their poll questions. Yes. Lynn. <laughs> It didn't have gardening or yard work or rentals or. Anything. I think, I think that falls into the anything I can not to work category. <laughs> <laughs> that falls into anything. All right, we've got a hundred percent vote, so I'm going to close Excellent. it off. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So, like I said, this is completely subjective. I am going to be talking a lot about revisiting business plans. Um, and yeah, I know a lot of people like to travel and I'm in the anything I can do not to work uh, category. And that is uh, to actually do some work on the business so I can work less during next tax season. And Amber, it looked like you were trying to say something to us, but you were on mute. No? Okay. All right. Oh, no, I was yelling at Jennifer. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. And Kathy has a place on a golf course, but it doesn't golf. <laughs> uh, all right, so make sure you take breaks. Breaks are really important for your, for your mental health and for your physical health and eye health. So one of the things that I learned fairly recently was to stare off in the distance at least 20 feet away every two hours for at least 20 seconds. Uh, so what I like to do is just go outside and just kind of like, do a walk around the house, look around a bit. Uh, do something different with your hands and body. Uh, help avoid repetitive stress injuries. You might want to take the time to learn a little bit about setting up your workstation ergonomically. Uh, learn something new, take a break from work, but still exercise your mind. Not just, uh, I'm going to just plug into Netflix all summer. That's That doesn't help your mind as much as, you know, maybe visiting a museum or taking a hike. Or, or learning something new, like Kim has learned scuba diving, for instance. Uh, as you can see, some pictures from our charter last year on Georgian Bay. That was a lot of fun. It doesn't look like it, but Julia's fish is actually way bigger than mine. I'm just holding mine right out to the camera so it looks huge. Good thing to do if you're ever holding the fish. You can make it look gigantic. Or take it bes besides a picture of an action figure. That's always really good. Know your priorities and and set those up, right? What uh, What is most important to you? Uh, family time, I know that's a big one for most people. Your business is going to be one of your priorities and the opportunity to work on your business in the summer. Hopefully you have a bit of a slower time. That can be helpful. Home renos and DIY projects, we're doing a lot of that ourselves. Leisure activities and hobbies. We're hoping to do some of that. And of course, some traveling and some learning. So does anybody else have anything they want to add about these kind of things? Um, you know, 
I, I like the the designing the gardens and the doing the gardening. Um, that's definitely something that we're doing as part of ours. Uh, Kim, you had something to say? Yeah, I was just going to say like, you know, um, COVID obviously created a lot of hardship and so many bad things happening for a lot of people. But in looking for the silver lining in all kinds of situations, one of the things that COVID did bring to me is that I guard my personal time ferociously for my mental health because about seven or eight months in, I felt like I was going to have a nervous breakdown. And I literally took, I don't remember if it was four or five days or a week, but I was like, enough. I am not doing anything right now. And it was kind of on a day by day basis of how I felt. And then after that, I was just like, if I'm working evenings and weekends, that's my choice, but my clients or whoever I'm talking to doesn't know that I'm working evenings and weekends. I'm using my delay delivery and, uh, and, and of course taking up the diving. And if I want to go diving at 10 o'clock in the morning on a work day, I do, but then I, I choose to work until seven or eight that night instead. But I, uh, that's what COVID taught me is to, uh, to take care of my personal time. That's, it's so one thing with the um, the opportunity that we have by working in the cloud is to do things like that. So, for instance, after this webinar, I have a meeting uh, with one of my teammates to start our weekly check in. And um, a couple of days ago or yesterday during a storm, we had a tree come down. So I'll be doing that for a little while this afternoon, just cutting that up, getting that out of our parking lot. Um, but yeah, like you, you do have those opportunities. It is important. And one of the challenges can be making sure that you're not just procrastinating, not just deferring, but scheduling that work time, scheduling that, that pleasure time, that leisure time, that other family business stuff that you have to do, whatever it may be. So anybody else have anything else they'd like to add about this? So just, yeah, yes, Kathy. I was just typing in to for Kim. Um, I agree. It is really, really important for us to make sure that we are um, protecting our time, right? It's so easy being in a service industry. Uh, we tend to very much be fixers and helpers. Um, but knowing that it's also important to work on your own business, right? And set some realistic goals for yourself, but don't put them so far out there with so many miracles you're going to perform. You know, make your goal of 20,000 things you want to do and cut it down to five, right? Don't. I like that idea. Yeah, don't overwork yourself as well, right? You set boundaries for our clients, but also to set boundaries into what's realistic for ourselves. That's a really good point. And you have to not only pick what those top priorities are, but you have to schedule them. And there's something else that's fantastic that you can do if you have a team, and that's delegate someone. Um, so, for instance, the first people who will be going through our T1 process and reviewing it are going to be Julia and Neri. Julia handles most of the customer communications and the early admin work, and Neri handles most of the beginning of the returns, right? Getting everything set up and, and ready for, for filing. So uh, delegation can really help with those items. Anybody else have anything that uh, they'd like to add here? Or we'll keep going. So, then you just mentioned that uh, with your staff and this delegating and the responsibilities and the, the segregation of duties, I guess um, we'll say. You just mentioned uh, two of your staff and they do certain tasks with regard to T1s. How do you define that and how do you find the stop area? So, they start with uh, one collects data. Um, one enters data, is that sort of where that uh, process begins? And then somebody else does the, the AFR and then somebody else does the review? How, how do you go through that with your staff? Oh, oh it, it, it's much more simplified than that. And the way we choose who's going to do what depends on their skill sets and their strengths, right? So Julia is a marketer by nature. For anybody who's ever met Julia or talked to Julia, she's really easy to talk with. And, and she's really about um, making connections with people. So we have her fronting on the communication side of things, right? Those, those automated emails that go up, following up for information, calling people, looking for things. 
Neri has expanded her role. Neri's been with me since 2017, uh, and she's really grown with the company, and she's become, you know, like my right hand, essentially. And so this past year, uh, we had our tax preparer um, did not return after Christmas. So Neri picked up the ball and decided to, to run with it. And she learned about um, uh, personal tax returns. Actually, Steve, she learned it, about it at the ATAP, uh, at the ATAP oh, conference okay. that we went to in Toronto. So that's Sorry, where she got kind of her first something year. about uh, somebody that a tax return preparer that decided to not come back after December. We go yeah. into every year in October with our planning and getting staff up to date and making sure we have all the training. And then by December, January, it all falls apart. It's nice to know I'm not the only one. So it's good. It, it, it's really remarkable how, how that <laughs> seems to happen. Um, but with ATAP, so that's that's where she, she developed the skills or, or got the information. Is that correct? Yeah, for the basics <laughs> of it. And then, of that's course, good. we've been coaching her along with you know how to interpret from QBO or from zero or from our templated spreadsheets into a tax return, things like that. But by helping her build her knowledge, build her skill level, it's making her able to contribute on a different level and making sure that I don't have to do everything. But you also uh, I don't, from, sorry. From, from that level, I find when I teach, it makes me stronger in the things that I'm like, oh yeah, I, it's things that I would normally step over doing, doing myself. And when you have to show somebody how to do it, now you're, you're bringing them along, but you're also uh, making so you get better at what you're doing. That's very true. And you can improve your systems as you go. It, and improve exactly. your checklists, improve your processes as you go. Right. Um, yeah. So this is the quote I chose for today. This is, I, I don't really know who this person is. Uh, I know she's an author and that's about it. But I just, I really liked this because it's true. And it's very true. For me, um, one of my very meditative activities is, is fishing. And I think that's pretty, everybody who's seen me around knows that I like to fish. I'm not a crazy hardcore fisherman out there every day or whatever, but I find it very meditative. And sometimes, and this actually happened last week, I was just casting off the dock and whatever, and just kind of thinking about life. And I had some ideas. I had to put down the rod and run in and make some changes to one of our workflows and then go back out and do some more. The nice part about being cloud is most of that, and that's my one exception with Dubsado, is there's no app. So I can't do it when I'm out in the boat, whereas I can do a lot of my work from out in the boat. Kim, what's up? I just have to say that my primary school English teacher student grammatical part is driving me crazy right now with this quotation that you okay. have on here. <laughs> it's a direct like, quotation that I got off of good. I'm reading. like, take that S out or add it. <laughs> but when we takes, you don't like the takes part? No. Oh, <laughs> all right. Well, I'll get it off the like, screen. It's, so it it, it's not as offensive. <laughs> Okay, so working on the business, I think a lot of people, I think a lot of us are in the same boat. Um, for us, it, it Kata is actually a process of continual improvement. It is mastering something through practicing it. So you've seen the Tai Chi in the park, they're doing Katas. You've seen, if anybody has children who are in Karate or Judo or some other martial art, they've probably done Katas as part of their uh, their training and, and belt level advancement. So some of the things that we're doing are revisiting the business plan. I revisit the business plan every year. I'd love to say that I'm doing it all the time. It's not entirely true. What I'm really doing is taking notes and then going back. And it's important to let some things uh, percolate and sit with you a bit before you implement a major change. If you just react, 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 you don't your plan will fall apart and it'll become kind of a mishmash of things i did go through that a couple of years ago i will be setting my business priorities and actually the last bullet here teach and learn these are my business priorities for this year teaching my team working on our processes and seeing what they need to be better to be better for us and to have better lifestyles one of the things that we were talking about with the cloud is yes, you can go diving at 10 a.m. Or you can, you know, go swimming at 3 p.m. with your kids or something like that, right? 
but then you have to schedule when you're going to do the work. And sometimes what happens is it's very easy to kind of just, oh, I'll do that tomorrow. Oh, I'll do that tomorrow. Oh, I'll do that tomorrow. And so what we're really trying to do with our company is, is create a culture where it's like, I'm going to do things as soon as I can do them. So then I have more free time, more capacity to take on more things, more capacity to learn things like that. Does anybody want to share anything they're working on for their business? I see a chat there. I was just going to say one thing about the getting things done as soon as you can, because you never know when something is going to pop up in life that yes. makes your day not go the way you had planned it. Yes. <laughs> And I've had a few a few setbacks in this last month that have really pushed my time limitations. Um, and well, that's why I'm like this right now. I, I decided this morning when I wasn't going to do anything that I was going to go and do my walk, even though my hip is hurting. But if I don't get out and do it, I don't stretch it and it's not going to get any better. So because I sit on my butt all day. So I had enough time to get in, get a shower and at least be dressed for the meeting. <laughs> Good for you, Carol. Good stuff. I like doing those kind of things too. Like Pepper likes his walks, so I'll take him out. You know, usually, usually a couple times a week. I'm not as as good as I should be, but he does have a lot of room to run around. Does anybody have any other business things that they're they're going to be looking at this summer? Anything big on the horizon? Creating a prioritized list each day of your top six things to do. I hear you on that one. This is the one thing I still use Scratchpad for. Okay, I heard somebody come off mute there for a minute. Steve. Oh, it's always me going on and off and thinking, oh no, I should I should just shut up. But uh, staffing is uh, is being the thing that uh, has just been haunting me for years. And yep. um, this the company that we have now, it's an iteration of something that was in 2013, 2015, and then it went through the big change in 2018 when we became MLL. And I got some partners and we, we did this. And it's just been a constant thing to get staff that are qualified to do certain things. And I don't know if I have too many expanded tasks that they're expected to do too many things or uh, too condensed that it doesn't interest people enough. I just, I, I don't know exactly what it is to draw people in. We, we've tried hiring from um, CPB. Um, we've tried looking at accountants and bringing somebody in or students um, in, in accounting roles and just say, okay, we want to teach you and train you. I might just, I don't, I don't know. I'm at a loss. Um, we've had some, some good experience with, with certain uh, individuals and just some horrendous experience with others. I, uh, I'm in the exact same boat as you. Exact same boat. Uh, we did have a very successful hire from the Noki Quay program, which was uh, advertised through CPB. And that one, that really frustrated me because when they advertised that and we attempted to contact them three different times and we didn't get responses back and it was sort of a communication thing again. It was, okay, here we go. You, you've offered this. Uh, we're here. Um, I don't know if it's because we're on the West Coast and and they're in Ontario, but we we didn't get anything back. Um, how, how was your involvement? How were you able to contact them as quickly as you were? Well, I just similar to yourself. I saw it. I called the number. I sent an email. It did take a few times before we got a response. To give you a little a bit of behind the scenes, uh, I do okay. know that there was. They did have uh, the person who was managing the program just got up and left one day. Uh, okay, and so I maybe think a lot of we caught in the same there. thing. Yeah. So you you followed through the same time, like two or three, four times. And uh, for one, me, it was three. Okay, well, for me, it was three times. Three. Uh, when a program is offered through a partner such as CPB, I expect that they've been vetted and you know, okay, you want us yeah. to contact you, contacting. And then we contact and then, you know, you get nothing back. Or as you said, it took you three times to try and get in touch with them. It took us that many and we, we just gave up. So yeah. congratulations, though. It sounds like it worked once you got through to them. It's it's ironic that um, we're talking about staffing and we had challenge the the organization that was helping with staffing had staffing challenges themselves. That's kind of ironic for sure. sure. But, very true. But um, again, this 
person, they come with high level theoretical knowledge from a foreign jurisdiction. This is her first job in many, many years. Uh, for a while, she was literally a lecturer at a university about accounting, but in a different jurisdiction. So she had to learn about what's going on here. And then she was living in a country where women were not allowed to work. And then she came to Canada and this, like she was getting back in the workforce and we were very, very lucky in that regard. But my experience with the Noki Quay program was positive and I would recommend it. Uh, I would just say, make sure that you interview and follow your gut because of, we got six candidates we selected out of the 10 we presented. Um, and after interviews, only three of them would I have been willing to make an offer to. One of them was very, very entry level. Uh, mm -hmm. And then the other two were, were quite strong. Again, learning about things in a foreign jurisdiction and nobody in Canada will hire them because they don't have Canadian experience, which we all know is absolute garbage. If she has any friends, please send them my way. <laughs> all right. I'll keep that in mind. Kim. I was just going to say one of the things for me, although it's not huge, it is something that's re-sparking my passion, and that is speaking. Um, yes. in, a, in a previous life, I used to do a lot of public speaking. I was, a, you know, very involved with Toastmasters and stuff, and I really got away from it when I went into this industry instead. Um, and over the past couple years, I've uh, been getting back into it first, of course, through Mark Wickersham, and then more recently with Intuit, and then upcoming with CPB Canada. So part of what I'm doing with my business, you know, is my team is still managing the day-to-day -day stuff, but I'm looking for more of those speaking opportunities for myself, because that's that's where my heart kind of lies right now. I think so. Caltex is going to be looking for speakers. Just, just uh, at Countex Toronto. I know that's big. Some positions true. open, yes. Yeah. You yeah. know, I have messaged uh, kind of like what Steve was just talking about. I have messaged them twice about something different about their June webinar that they just did with Kelly and um, I can't remember the guy's name, but I have messaged Steve twice about that and he has not responded at all. Always disappointing, eh? No, yeah. Not this Steve, though, right? Oh no! Oh, this, from oh thank you. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, fellow diver. I figured I, I would respond to you right away. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I was just going to say, with regards to speaking, uh, I am doing a webinar with CPB Canada in a couple weeks about bookkeeping for blockchain. Uh, that was, and that webinar will be a, a, a presented live um, at CPB Ignite in September, and then Kim and I are also doing a session at CPB Ignite that. We'll see how it goes. It could be quite controversial. We're talking about communication, but like the real challenges with communication. So the raw like truth. About the raw truth, dealing with ESL, dealing with misused words or different cultural uh, ways of doing things and things like that. So we'll yeah. see how it goes. Okay. Uh, Kathy did mention that uh, for that list of six items, they should include business and client work I agree. I think it's also important to have on those six items, the things that are important personally. So for instance, one of the, you know, maybe it's something like, I don't know, cooking a pot of chili or cutting up a tree or something like that. So, all right, let's keep going. So revising the business plan, a reminder, your business plan is a living document. You should revise it frequently and refer back to it frequently. And everything should stem from your mission, vision, and values. All your strategies should tie back to your mission and vision. All your strategies should be aligned with your values. Um, and these are some things that we're revisiting. You know, my original mission, vision, and values were just, I look back at it and talk about ambitious. I think that was a little bit over the top uh, and things have changed, right? Like originally I wanted to serve everybody everywhere. And now it's like, no, we're only doing Canada. And, and you know, things kind of pare down and we become more and more focused on what we're doing. And as a result, I think we're a better company for it. Um, thinking about what you need personally, and that might be to not be working 60 to 80 hours a week during tax season. Uh, that might be, you know, delegating, getting some, uh, you know, local or offshore talent to help with some things, getting those processes in place so they can do those things and making sure you're getting your customers' needs and your team needs met. 
So does anybody have any goals? I know mine is training my team. That's that's top of mind for me. Does anybody else have any goals that they'd like to share for their business? You know, Kim spoke about speaking. Oh, I have a cue here. I'd like to know from oh. Kim, what can Kim, we can, do? Can with, you promote Amy, with... please? What, Jonathan, was that something you, you want me to do? Uh, yeah, uh, Amy would like to be promoted to a panelist so she can. Oh, okay. I asked her and she declined. Okay. Oh, okay. It's coming again. I just sent it again, Amy. There she goes. Sorry, what were you saying, Steve? I was going to ask Kim uh, with her comment about speaking. What could a company do to help promote staff managers um, such as yourself to um, to have those opportunities? What types of things could could a company do to help you? If you work for somebody else, I assume you work for yourself, but if you work for another company, what could they do to help promote the speaking opportunities? What could they do in that regard? Um, to, to sort of regurgitate and make sure I understand, like what can my team do to help promote me for speaking opportunities, you mean? Let's do that. Sorry, I, I assume that you were the boss. Um, I am. I'm the, the owner. Okay. I'm the owner. Yeah. So if you weren't the owner, if if you work for somebody else, you yeah. work for Jonathan, for example, or you work for Carol um, or Amber. If Amber or Carol had you working for them and they knew that you liked the idea or you want to expand your your speaking ability, what types of, of opportunities could they give you? What could they do to help you out with their company? You're the boss. You can decide oh, whatever you want. But if, yeah. if somebody would say, hey, I want to promote this this attitude in staff or managers, what what could we do? Yeah, honestly, I, I really think from a team perspective, it's just awareness. Like so often there's little opportunities and I'm not necessarily looking for these big, huge gigs from Intuit and CPB Canada and stuff, even little local opportunities. So, you know, if if somebody has a niche that's an industry that I'm not familiar with and they want somebody to come talk to them or whatever. Like many, many years ago when John and I first met, we did a couple breakfast and learns for plumbers and electricians and stuff where, you know, we would uh, get some food catered in and we would have guest speakers from that industry come in and talk to them about their specific industry, you know, talking about LED bulbs and whatever. And then Jonathan and I would do our little accounting blurb at the end, right? So, you know, just um, any any type of opportunity or awareness, even if they think it's not accounting related, there's always uh, opportunities to talk to people about business, things that may not necessarily be related to bookkeeping, but where I still think I could add value to the business owner. So, I would say that speaking needs to be a part of your marketing strategy and you got to make sure it aligns with your goals. Um, and, you know, you got to make sure that as your goals change, that your, your, your marketing strategy changes as well. And that might be speaking less. That might mean speaking more. That might mean changing what you're speaking about. Um, with regards to supporting employees, I think one of the biggest things that's most important is the white space to be able to be creative and the time to actually prepare presentations and to learn about what you want to speak about or what you want them speaking about. And if you're going to promote employees speaking, then I would make sure that you align your marketing strategy with your mission and vision and make sure that what they're going to be speaking about is, is what you want them speaking about, the image you want to be presenting out, out there. Things like that. So. Hi, Amy. Nice to see you. Hi, sorry, I wasn't ready to come as a panelist earlier, which is why I declined it twice. Oh, okay. Uh, that's all. So I was ready at that point. So right. it was not a rush in any manner. I was just like, when someone's available, well, let me in. That's all. And sorry, I sent it a second time. I didn't see the pop-up the first time that said that you had declined. Right. And so when I saw it the second time, I was like, oops, she thinks I'm nagging her. <laughs> no, I just didn't answer the first time. Then you sent it again. Uh, I'm like, okay, maybe she's just like resending it. I, I don't care. Yeah, Tanya told me to keep resending it every once in a while. So. I was here for that. And so that was like, she's probably just doing that. <laughs> hey, Lynn, what, what was it you'd like to contribute? Um, 
to Steve's question, if I've understood him correctly to promote employees or to promote to, to offer them opportunities to expand their horizons within the company, would be if you've identified something that you think they would be good at, but maybe they don't see it themselves, you might want to encourage them to say, hey, you know, um, I see that you, you really came through on such and such. And maybe you could develop our new policy around that or our new process around that and then present it to the team you know at next month's team meeting or whatever you know to give them those internal opportunities in a safe environment the little That's steps a really good steps. idea yeah really little steps i love that idea That's all i got i love that idea one of the, one of the things that we do is we we um make people brand champions so for instance um Tanya Roy, who is uh, one of our CPBs, uh, she's brand champion for our Keeper platform. I've become brand champion for Right Tool. So these are some some things that uh, you know. Again, you know, you, you're you're having them teach each other a little bit, um, and, and you know, help push the team, pull the team together, and push the individual to help kind of it push them in a positive direction that's productive. Uh, the one thing I will say about that is you have to be a little bit cautious about knowing people's limits. Um, we did have a wonderful tax preparer years ago, but she did not want to speak to clients. And when we told her, you're going to have to speak with clients, she quit. And it was, we didn't realize that it was that going to be that big of a deal. And it wasn't a, um, any concerns with her communication style or whatnot. She just didn't want to speak to people outside the company. She's she she looking for a job, Jonathan. Um, you, can you touch with her? I, 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 I've reached out to her a few times just to see how she's doing, but uh, no, I am not currently oh. in touch with her, which is unfortunate. And He's, she was a very naughty person. Between the CPB partnership and now this person, I have a feeling like Steve is looking to hire if anybody knows anybody. <laughs> yeah. There, a lot of us are looking to hire. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right, I'm going to keep going to the next slide because I know Carol wanted to know about this SWOT. Revisit your SWOT analysis. So um, the last year, things have changed. You know, I, I think definitely something, depending on where you live, a threat could be wildfires. That is a very real threat that different people face in different communities. Um, you know, I live on a lake, but I'm surrounded by mountains. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um we've already had two wildfires up this area. Oh, oh wow. All man-made. Yep. Because yep. we've had no rain and we've had no lightning. There's other uh other threats that can can happen. I mean, I think everybody has the pandemic fresh in their mind. And I think that forced a lot of us to really pivot and, and to move to the cloud quite quickly and to really integrate those systems. Uh, another threat that we've had is localized labor. So our labor is geographically dispersed, um, but we did have uh, a couple of years ago, one of our teammates was out for five weeks because of a typhoon that pretty much shut down their city um, for quite a while, Hurricane Rai. That's our, our teammate in Cebu, Philippines. Um, other opportunities crop up. Some opportunities have now kind of gone by the wayside. Um, I would say some opportunities. I think I saw Kathy, Kathy smile when I said right tool. Uh, right tool is a good opportunity. Uh, AI is an opportunity and a threat. That's chat GPT. Have you grown in areas of your of skill? Has your business grown? Have you Has your team grown? Do you have strengths that you didn't used to have? Do you have weaknesses that you're overly reliant on a particular thing, right? Like we have to keep in mind that if you're, we're working with a single accounting platform or if we're working with a single online platform like we do with Google, that is that is something that's a little bit scary at times, right? What would happen if? And these are some things that you, you don't want to think about, but you need to think about from time to time. How would you react? What would you do if? Those kind of questions. So about SWAT, does anybody have any other opportunities or threats I'm going to avoid talking about our specific strengths and weaknesses because I think everybody's a little bit different. But are there any other opportunities or threats that people would like to bring up and talk about? 
opportunities I'd like to talk about. That's um, amalgamation, mergers, opportunities to reach out to other individuals who do bookkeeping, accounting. Why can't we grow together as a team rather than as individual groups? That's one that's always stood out in my mind. I used to be um, a board member of uh, one of the local credit unions. And it was back in the, the early 90s when, early 90s, late 90s, sorry, when um, amalgamation was just a, a bad word. Mergers were a bad word. And we found that they needed to do that to grow. The Coast Capital Savings became the result of that. Um, it, it happens in so many businesses. Why don't we do it more with you know, bookkeeping and accounting? I don't yeah. know why we do that more as groups. We, I think with bookkeeping, it's far easier. Um, with As a CPA, we are regulated, and um, that can be a problem. Uh, for instance, we could not be acquired by a bookkeeping firm, for instance. Uh, no, we could but not... as accounting and other accountants. You know, yes. you can with another accountant. Again, it, not specific to to this, but the the opportunity to grow or to as an accountant to acquire a, a bookkeeping group or a bookkeeping firm to expand your services, your opportunity. It just to me that's that's one of the biggest opportunities to manage. You know, the economies of scale to be able. We're dealing with so many things remote now, and we have so many opportunities as. Um, organizations to go across the country to you mentioned that you have staff in the Philippines now or temp staff opportunities that are there to expand what we do to provide better services to our clients and a more um, broad variety of, of expertise that's my thought sometimes when two companies come together and, and two owners come together one has one type of skill set another has another you can really create some synergistic wow there. Amy, what's up? Well, or you some... think Jonathan, do you want to buy me out and I can work? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about it. Okay. <laughs> so Steve, we like Jonathan and I live across the lake from each other. I'm a bookkeeper. <laughs> so that was that was the joke there. <laughs> I thought it was a great idea. So way to go, I'm not Jonathan. Against go. It. I would totally take Jonathan as my boss. <laughs> Um, I wanted to talk just a little bit, you mentioned it in regards um, what could be a threat, but I also have been really seeing it as an opportunity is AI, like chat GBT. Um, I struggle sometimes with words, even though people tell me differently, but I sometimes like get overwhelmed. And one thing I learned a few weeks ago, or maybe a month or so ago at Tanya, like in Tanya's bootcamp was you can take an income statement, like literally copy and paste it from the top down to the bottom from QVO and paste it into chat GBT and ask it to analyze it. And it will give you like a verbal analy like anal analysis. Sorry, my words didn't work there, but you can shorten it, that kind of thing. Now I wouldn't never take anything straight for straight, like straight words there, but giving you ideas and things to work through things. And I've really, it's really been great um, for me, like trying to get certain thoughts out, like I work on a lot of budgets for an MPO I work for. So putting them in there and saying, telling me over budget, telling me my under budget, helping me break it down so I can create a really good analysis quicker than I used to be able to. And then another AI product that I use a lot is Grammarly. Love it. Like it's not necessarily AI, but it's amazing. All of the girls have it. It helps so much with like the tone. I'm not sure how to say this, like that kind of thing. And it's been like, it's, helped a lot um, with just their confidence in sending out emails and things like that, because I'm moving towards they're the main contacts and not me. Yeah, you so have to. It's it's helping build that for them. And um, yeah, so those I've found is really great opportunities for growth within the firm, but also creating confidence and helping everybody grow and get better at what they're doing and being a bit more efficient with time. The only caveat I'm going to put to that is do not put any like confidential never. information. In I always, GPT. I always copy from like literally the first line. Like it never goes above. I, I completely agree with you. Um, yeah. What was that? Two things, two things I was going to add. First, Jonathan and I were in that meeting with Tanya when she taught us both how to do the analysis with uh, chat GPT. You remember that? That was, yeah. I, I, I had never seen that before. So yeah. probably about and a half ago when she's oh yeah and by the way i just cut and paste the financial statement you can do that 
So, so someone else taught her that, and I was there for when someone else showed her that. But it's I just still, thought that was still amazing. amazing. Blows my mind. The the other item that I've noticed with AI, and uh, you mentioned Grammarly, and that's that's one that uh, some of my staff have been using because I'm I'm a stickler for for proper English. The way that that things are worded is important when you when you are writing. Um, notes to clients, it's got to be clear, concise, and all of that. That's one thing. Um, my staff have kind of got this chat GPT thing now, and I'm noticing that more and more of the, the written work that they send me is really good. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, wait a minute. I know no. your writing style, and I know what I've seen from you in the last year and a half, this isn't you and they're saying no no we're using this i'm like you know all the power to you it, excellent it is yeah. it is helping them to they put in what they think their their wording should be it spits of something that perhaps is just different or in some cases better in some whatever mm -hmm. but it, it gives a a new opportunity for learning because then yeah. they are also and me too i'm, I'm looking at okay i really want to Tanya gave the great, greatest example. She had one client she wanted to swear at and curse out and say the worst things about. So she wrote it. She told us she wrote it with all the swear words and everything. And she put it in there and said, make this sound better and more professional. And it kicked out something that actually was, was calm and, and polite and concise. This is a good thing. It, it's teaching yeah. us how to do better with so our business. I'm sorry. Something I used it for this week because I was a client or a potential client was disagreeing with me in regards to employee versus subcontractor. And I was expressing like, here's the website. This is what it is. He's like, that's really like, it's a lot. And I'm like, I know it's a lot of information, but this is. So what I did was I copied from the top up until like, just like uh, talking about the factors and the steps. I copied that entire thing from the CRA website and I put it into chat, chat GPT. And I say, condense this for me, please. And I did it a couple of times, like, give me some bullets, give me that. But it's the exact wording with the exact back end, but like it's this big instead of nine pages. And it's yeah. like the exact facts and the things. And I sent him that. And then I was like, I'm going to save this as a resource now because I know the information is accurate. It abides by the tax laws, but someone's going to actually read this and be like, oh, okay, that makes sense to me opposed to this giant thing of a million different words, which we understand, but a lot of people, they don't want to read that. And There's a lot to filter through. Yeah. yeah. And, and I don't know if it's written by CRA, right. most cases, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So no. it sounds like maybe and this it has is something too many words. Um, all right. We are going to have to keep moving because we are, I just realized the time Kim wanted to say something. Yeah, I'll be real quick, Jonathan. Thank you. I just wanted to mention about the SWAT um, two kind of opportunities. If your clients aren't doing this, offer it as a value add and help them with it. And along those lines, um, even when we're doing our own, get an external person or your team to help you be and contribute because sometimes we are so deep in the weeds, we don't idea. see big pictures. So don't do it on your own. That is a great idea getting the team contribution and the external external ideas as well. All right, I am going to start flying a bit through here. Um, we, we're pretty much out of time. I apologize. It's When we get these engaging discussions, I like to keep them going. And we get some amazing ideas and everybody learns. So business priorities, um, you know, fill your jar with the big rocks first, right? Uh, a few of ours, our, our big one is standards quality manuals. This is really like the foundation to our processes. We are required to do one under CSRS 4200 for compiled financial statements, blah, blah, blah. But it really has, has, has um, spurred us to do them across the board. So we started with a work paper. We have to go up to the compiled financial, the T2s and the compiled financials. But we're also going to do it for T1s. We're also going to do it for our bookkeeping processes. We have policies in place, but people still have questions because they they haven't been trained to go to these these manuals or these 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 policies. So that's one of the things that uh, we're really working on and making our team more holistic. 
Um, and then, of course, we're looking to find the gaps in our service and plug them. And the biggest one for us is an accountant. So um, we need an accountant. Does anybody uh, uh, want to share just quickly their top priority for their business? Okay. I'm going to keep going. Carol, you took yourself off mute. It looked like you wanted to say something. I was just going to say my biggest priority over the summer for my business, I'm coming towards the end of redoing the boot camp, um, Tanya's business boot camp, and so, uh, or bookkeeping boot camp. I'm going to be using a lot of that stuff to update stuff that I haven't updated in a while, i.e. Yeah. manuals and HR and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah um, that leads very well into systems revisions and cleanups. Uh, so what went wrong? What feedback did you get from your customers? How do you keep things from going wrong next time? Things slipping through the cracks, things like that. Are we doing things right? Or are we firefighting? Are we getting things set up properly and doing them right away? Or are we putting out fires? Uh, and then, of course, customer service, building the expectations, setting them. And, and most importantly, I think what this has been mentioned many times, Kathy, Carol, um, Kim, enforce your boundaries. Make sure that you have those boundaries. Um, and then reviewing the feedback you've gotten over the years and or over the past year and implementing some changes. Um, I'm just going to keep going uh, because we are at time. Um, we're focused on training this summer. That's going to be our biggest thing. Um, can training programs be outsourced? Yes, they can. That's the answer. Um, but if you're outsourcing, are you sending them to the right program? So for instance, a lot of other jurisdictions can accept cash-based accounting. Canadian corporations have to do their accounting in an accrual basis. So it's very important to ensure that if you are investing in, in third-party training, that it does meet your standards. So one of the things that might be you might consider is going through the training yourself first. Um, where do your team's strengths and weaknesses lies? lie and who can be brought up to do higher level work and and everybody wants a raise but what are those raises based on are they based on the quality of the work the type of work what are the different things and then of course are they happy are they satisfied with where things are going because there's nothing worse than leaning hard on an employee and then that employee walks at the door for an extra dollar an hour all right and finally do something different Resting, redirecting, and refocusing the mind can lead to astonishing results. Uh, just to, to point a couple things out, this is a picture from our barbecue from last year. And then this is a picture of our friend Kim underwater diving. So uh, yeah, it's, I, I'm going to just keep moving, but I'd love to talk a bit more about this after the poll question. But I want everybody to have the opportunity to get their CPD. So Kim, if you wouldn't mind throwing up the next poll. Sorry, it took me a minute to find all the buttons again. It should Hosts be up. and panelists yeah. cannot vote. Okay. You have to reset it. Oh, I clicked on the, there's people voting. Yeah, but us panelists can't vote. It says okay. it's at the bottom. Sorry. Allow panelists to vote. And then. All right, there we are. Okay. Well, I guess you only have to maybe check that once and it was already checked from the last one. So I unchecked it this time. Oh. I I yourself. So. As the poll launcher, I guess I can't vote. Oh. Were you able to vote in the last one? No. Oh. And I know yeah. Tanya's mentioned that before as well, that yeah. she she can't vote. So. But just let her right, know so, so you can get your CPB, CPV credit. Yeah. Is everybody answered? Are we good? Yes. All right, so what are our results? I love it. Everybody's all about friends and family. I agree 110%. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing some people uh, have living further away from my normal social circle. It's definitely more challenging. So 
Oh, awesome. Awesome. Okay. So just a summary, take a break. You deserve it. But redirect okay. your focus and refocus and take the time to work on your business and take care of yourself first and the people around you. Make sure you enjoy yourself. So, um, I have one more quote here. I just, again, another author, but I, I like this one. Some of your best ideas come when you're on vacation. So. All right. Well, that brings us to the end. Sorry we went a little bit over time. I think that tends to happen. Thank when you we get so much. And we get a good Thank conversation you. going. Does anybody yeah, have anything? Have a more? With that conversation. Good, good, good. Okay. Well, does anybody have anything they want to talk about or bring up at all? All right, Kim, thank you so much for hosting today. 